This evening, I wish you a Merry Christmas and welcome to this Christmas Eve service at Westminster Presbyterian Church. I hope you're safe and warm on this cold winter evening and that you're experiencing both the mystery and the majesty of this time. I hope you will find this service full of reverence and joy that celebrates this night like no other. If you have accessed the online bulletin, I want you to take note of, of all the offerings that are coming up in the new year. You'll find that beginning on page seven of the bulletin. We will have a, a Christmas Day service tomorrow uh, at 11 a.m. It will be a more casual service with an extended greeting time and, and lots of singing of carols. The following Sunday, New Year's Day, we will again have one service at 11 o'clock. I hope to see you there. On Sunday, January the 8th, we will begin a new sermon series titled, Follow Me, Joining Jesus' Journey, in which we will consider the beginning of Jesus' ministry and his call to each of us to join him on that journey. After the worship services that day, as it will be my last Sunday, official Sunday before I retire, there will be a time for us to greet one another so that I can share with you my sincere appreciation for you allowing me to serve as one of your pastors over these years. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let's look to God in prayer. God, we've heard the words of scripture, the story of Jesus' birth. And so we pray that you would now open our ears, open our eyes so that we may hear and see the word that you have for us this day. 
We pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. So we tell this story every year, a story of Jesus' birth, the story of a God who comes, the story of God's love for us and God's love for the world. We tell this story again and again because we need to hear it. We need to be reminded that there is a different story than the story that the world is telling us. We need to know that there is this, this different story that, that takes seriously the brokenness that's all around us and, and the brokenness that is within us. And yet at the same time gives us a sense of hope and, and peace that calls us to love, that invites us to joy. And so we turn to Luke's gospel and we hear the story again. In Luke's gospel, the story doesn't start with Jesus actually, but starts with Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor. Caesar Augustus issues a decree that, that all the world is to be registered. Think about that for just a minute. One man declares that all the world should be registered. And Caesar's not just interested in numbers, he's interested in taxes. He's interested in power. Caesar wants to know not just how many subjects he has, but, but he wants to know where they live, where he can find them. He wants them to know that, that they belong to him. And that's because Caesar, Augustus, has his own story. N.T. Wright, writing about Luke's story, says Augustus turned the great Roman Republic into the Roman Empire and put himself as the head. Uh, he proclaimed that, that, that he alone had brought justice and peace to the whole world. And then declaring that his father was divine, he began to talk about himself as a son of God. And this is where Jesus' story starts, is, is in history, in, in real history, in our history. At this time and place where there is a different story being told, a story that shapes people's vision and it shapes their lives. And I think there are versions of Caesar's story that, that still circulate today. We hear it from politicians, we hear it from activists, we hear it from religious leaders. I alone can save you. We can save the world. We can save our nation. I think we hear it also from advertisers, from, from influencers, from social media who are all trying to sell us a product or, or an image or, or an identity. They all try to say to us that, that, that in this, you can find love, you can find peace, you can find happiness, you can find joy. But Caesar's story is not true. And the stories that the world tells us are not true. At least they're certainly not the whole truth. So tonight we, we come together to tell a different story, to God, tell God's story, a story that also changes our vision and changes our lives. We are told in Luke's gospel that in this region, in Caesar's empire, there are shepherds who are living out in the field and they are watching their flocks by night. But then a messenger of the Lord, an angel, stands before them and he says to them, Do not be afraid, for I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. So this is a story that is about good news. It is good news of great joy. And it is good news for all people. As unlikely as it seems, the messenger says to these shepherds, for to you is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. New Testament scholar, scholar Justo Gonzalez says that, that the meaning of this word salvation in the New Testament, also in common usage of that day, is broader than we might think. And so he says salvation means healing, liberation, freedom from bondage to sin, the promise of eternal life, and more. And so he says to say that Jesus is Savior means that, that he frees people from evil that, that includes sin and eternal death and disease and oppression and exploitation. 
I thought it says that if we don't see all of this yet, it's because the work of Jesus has not been completed. The reign of God that is proclaimed when Jesus comes has not yet come to its full fruition. And so the Christmas story is not over. And we are invited not just to hear this story, but to participate in this story to share the stories with others and to embody this story to others with our lives. That's what I think the shepherds do. They go to Bethlehem and they find the child Jesus just as the angel has told them. And then they share what, what they have heard, what they have seen with, with Joseph and with Mary. And then they go back to their fields praising God and glorifying God. And that's our invitation tonight. It's not enough to tell this story just once a year. It's not enough to just tell this story among ourselves. I think that we are invited to let this Christmas story shape our vision and shape our lives, not just for a season, but, but in every season. And I think we do that by, by looking for Jesus ourselves, this Jesus who still comes, this Jesus who, who is always looking for us. And then we share this good news with others who need to hear that there is a different story than the word that the world is telling them. That there is this, this story that, that brings us life. And so that's my Christmas prayer. That's what I hope that, that all of us will, will hear this story, but will let it sink in within us and begin to change our vision of the world begin to change how we live among other people. And then I hope that, that when we've heard it and, and we've let it sink in, we'll begin to share the story with others, with our, with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, with our colleagues, that we'll share this story both with our word, but, but even more than that, with our deeds. Because I think we need to hear this story and, and others need to hear the story and particularly the message on this Christmas Eve. Do not be afraid, for to you and to the world has been born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen.
As we light the Christ candle tonight, we remember the words of Scripture. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. Jesus tells His disciples, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and give glory to our Father in heaven. So together we lift the light of Christ. Scripture says, Arise and shine, for our light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, sharing the Christmas story with your words and with your deeds. Amen. Thank you.